Hello and welcome to Matt Parker's Math Solutions. I'm Matt Parker and this Math Solution is for the Triangle Peg Solitaire Puzzle from last week. That's where you jump over either pegs or marbles or coins, tokens. I use tokens and then you try to, using the jumping rules of checkers, get rid of all but one peg, solitaire thing, coin, whatever. I use tokens and I can't use them now because I sold them on eBay. More about that at the end of the video. However, we're going to go through, first of all, the correct answer and why it's the correct answer and then we'll go through some of the maths and videos and programming code people have sent in. I'm filming this one. This is my um, back in my lounge because while I'm working from home, I decided to go through and clean out my box storage room and get some shelving in there. Very exciting. However, all the stuff that came out of that is currently in my study that I turned into my filming studio while I'm locked at home. So I'm in the lounge. Anyway, um, so if you've not seen these videos before, normally that's rambly, but I've got my laptop here and you can see there whatever is on my screen. And so the correct answer was five. You could get rid of all but one peg in five moves. Well done everyone who sent that in as the correct answer. 60.2% of the people who submitted an answer got it correct. That's good. And it turns out that's uh, 1,421 correct answers we were sent in from over 2,000 submissions. So thank you so much. Over 2,000 people who sent in a uh, solution. Um, it was five. There you go. And in fact, well, I was about to say there are two valid solutions, but there are more depending on how you count it. Technically, there's only one. So here's the deal. Um, there are two ways you could do it if you start in one of the edge pieces. So it doesn't work in the middle, because if you take the middle one out, you can't move. There's no options. If you take a corner one out, you can't do it in five. If you take an edge one out, as you can see uh, here, you can go through and leave just one in the same place. Now, I don't know how closely you're watching that. Um, I'll rewind it. Here you go. Um, it's exactly the same apart from one of them you go around one way and one you go around the other way. So it's a trivial change. It's the same moves, just a different way around. And this is for starting in the two position. And then you can see the last peg there ends up in the three position. In fact, you can break the whole lot down by the coin you remove to start with and then the two different ways around. So uh, technically, as you can see, there are 12 ways of doing it because there are six edge tokens and each of them has two effectively identical solutions. So in reality there's one but there's actually because of the way that Oliver programmed the submittable part of the website when you're actually clicking it in you've got to choose which one you click. So technically yeah there were 12 valid solutions that we accepted and uh, Oliver then ran through all the solutions we were sent in to find out where people were starting. So these are the starting moves. So the most common starting place was two by a long shot, 643 of you, 256. Nice number, well done everybody. 256 of you started at three and then they drop off pretty quickly, nine and eight, six and four. So, huh. So the top two and the bot followed by the bottom two were the most popular and then those boring side ones. No one likes four. Why would you start at four when you could start at two? It's right next to it. Um, there you go. So there you are, pointless stats, just in case you were curious. Now you might be thinking, hang on a second, you said the answer was five. How do we know that there's not a four solution and just no one has found it? Like what if, and no offense to anyone watching, myself included, what if humans, we just weren't smart enough to find the magical four solution? So uh, thanks to uh, Tichuan Tez, this fantastic person, Thanks, sorry, I, I should get people to send in pronunciation guides for their names. Sorry if you didn't, I missed it. Maybe you were like, pronounce it this way, and I didn't spot that. Anyway, uh, so you thought you'd see if you can prove if it could be done in four. So to start with, because there's nine coins, uh, well there's 10 to start with, you take one off, there's nine left, you have to get down to one. That means there's eight coins that have to be removed at some point. So there needs to be eight jumps. However, you can do multiple jumps in the same go. Well, you can't do that to start with because there's only one empty spot. In fact, you can't do it in the second move. You, you, because of the way the coins are, you can only uh, do a single jump at that point. So you've got to do a one jump move, then you've got to do another one jump move. And you go, okay, now if we could do two moves to get rid of the remaining six, we found a solution on four. Can that be done? Um, it can't, because the longest chain of jumps you can do is three, 
and that always involves taking a coin from the center. So if you want to get a board out, have a play, first of all, convince yourself you can't do more than three, then convince yourself it has to use one in the center. And there's only one coin in the center, and as they correctly point out, you can't get a coin back into the center, so it means you can only have one of length three, which means it's impossible to remove the remaining six in uh, two long chains. So the best you can do is one long chain, which uh, you can't do four, and it means five is technically the most efficient, uh, which, which, which basically it rules out four moves, says five is a possibility, and then you do an existence um, proof that, oh, this is not what I we're talking about here. You do an existence proof, because you basically show, here's one, that's five, and that, that proves that five is the optimal. So great work there. Now, how do people work out their solutions? How'd they come across them? A lot of people just try to look at every possible combination of moves. So here you are, Zach, my goodness, did a very elaborate flow chart to step through all the possible moves and where you end up, and then they've used bold to indicate where it's a run of moves, so it only counts as one go. Uh, people did loads of variations on this. Miko uh, did it by drawing them out, that's great, you can go analog. It doesn't have to be computerized. I love the coloring in, great work. Uh, and Luke wrote a full on paper, um, breaking it down. So this is the, the exhaustive breakdown of the 10 coin solution. I like at the very bottom in there, like wrap up, they're like, look, be very thorough and careful with uh, your working out and keeping track of what you've done because it's a nightmare otherwise. So uh, great work, Luke, um, for doing all of that. And Patrick here wrote some code to generate the graphics. This is using Python to generate uh, the flow chart of going between them all, which I thought was really nice. So great work there, Patrick. And so you show that it, well, the shortest path from the starting state to the one left state is uh, those five moves there. Uh, and James, as always, did a video. So um, I will have a link to their YouTube video. They've gone through and they also then carry on and look at bigger triangles. Um, which was a common thing, people expanding it into bigger triangles. Although when people were looking at bigger and bigger ones, you can kind of play with the four peg solution, but once, sorry, the four layers in the triangle solution, but once it gets much bigger than that, once you're up to the 15 or the 21 cases, it's a nightmare. So a lot of people turn to programming. And um, Alex here did a whole bunch in Python. A lot of people sent in Python code. I'll link to Alex's, it's on GitHub below. You can go and check it out. Not everyone used uh, Python. Column here, uh, Haskell, you rebel, column. So uh, Haskell, I'll link to that as well below. And Zoe, this is one of my favorite ones. Uh, Zoe used Scratch. So this is a graphical uh, kind of programming language. And uh, Zoe is 11 and she put together an exhaustive search in Scratch. So Zoe, that is absolutely fantastic. Uh, I'm, I'm very impressed. And it makes a cool noise when it finds the shortest path. So Zoe, excellent, excellent work. So no matter what your experience in programming, you can give this a go and try and find some solutions. That's excellent. Um, uh, actually, I don't know what code Markle, I don't know what language Markle used, but I thought this was nice because they looked at the bigger triangles and the minimum number of moves if you start from those positions. And so if you start in the center on the 10 peg version, you can't solve it. Whereas you can see here, Markle has done the uh, 15 peg and found you got 10. If you start in the, in the corners, you can do it at a minimum of 10. The center of the edges, a minimum of nine and the center 11. And then they've gone up to the 21. Amazingly, the average number of moves required for the 21 peg solution is smaller than the average number of moves required for the 15, despite there being more pegs, because you've got more freedom to do runs, you can do it in average with fewer moves. Fantastic. Uh, Markle's code didn't make it for the next one up. So once you go to, uh, what's the next one, 21, 28, uh, didn't work. And so that's uh, open question. And that's a cool pattern. Look, look at that pattern on 21. Ah, so I am very curious to see what happens for the next triangles up. Actually, if anyone, because a lot of people ran into this problem of you just have so many options, like it explodes. And so a lot of people's code just ground to a halt. If anyone can give me a nice diagram like this, uh, we'll use Markle's uh, coloring scheme just to keep it consistent. If anyone can send it in, uh, I'll tweet it or something. I'll put it out there because I would love to see this for higher ones. I won't do a whole new video on it unless it's amazing. Um, but if anyone does crack higher ones, um, send them in. And Carl's was nice um, because Carl actually, uh, this is them playing it. Actually, I'm going to pause that. Uh, their code when they were working it out did it backwards. So it started with one 
and then generated like each time you jump over an empty spot one would appear in it and so because as I, they correctly pointed out they're like it's the same forwards and backwards so their code ran in reverse i'll link to us on github carl also used python um, but has got a converter into i think c or something like that so if you want to check it out you can and i put in this video to remind me a lot of people sent in because i knew there were toy versions of this like what carl is using a lot of people sent in the cracker barrel um one i was aware of cracker barrel as a restaurant in the us i've never been uh, because we go to the states quite a lot but i've never been to a cracker barrel and apparently you play it with the actual pegs in the solitaire arrangements there you are i had no idea that was a thing so thank you the millions of people who mentioned crackle barrel in the comment section of the original video and thanks to michael for sending in this photo i assume michael took it uh, or has it at home you can buy it oh there you are i was about to say hope michael didn't go to a crackle barrel restaurant when we're meant to all be distancing so anyway there you go that's kind of fun okay uh quick aside i had a throwaway comment about conway's soldiers and a few people did look into the case of if you've got a triangular layout and how far you can get a peg to go up and so simon's done some some, some fantastic working out here uh so you've got the rest of his paper that i'll link to below but i'm just going to pause it on the first one they basically showed because you need to get tokens you've got to keep feeding the zero spot basically and they showed that uh i think you says seven or eight is the greatest distance you can get to uh cal did the working out here as well i think it maxes out at uh eight yes so um if you've got tokens in the eight position that's as far out as you can go and then eventually get them into the zero and so some did some great working out on that and uh cal did it by hand I'll, I'll chuck the links below so uh, good work some people did look into because that means there's now a finite number of tokens that can feed into that position so that's going to limit how far you can reach up from that position um, which is all good uh, and last a honorable mention so as you know I work with some people to make this videos possible thank you so much to Oliver who does uh, the coding and uh, looks after the league table and the submission form and all that and helps goes through the solutions and Deanna who goes through all the stuff that you send in as well um, and uh, puts together her favorite things that were submitted and she wanted to have an honorable mention for Caleb here because Caleb used uh, working out and nuts um, so there you are so actual just you know uh, nuts on a, uh, on a serviette and some and some writing and that was enough to crack it so and so um, there you are. So I know other people write some very cool code and explore some fringe bits of mathematics, but frankly, a handful of nuts and a bit of paper and you can get involved. So there you are. Thank you so much everyone who was involved in um, the solitaire uh, triangle peg Matt Parker's maths puzzle. Do keep sending in your solutions. Uh, it's really good fun. And we will have another puzzle out next week. So as always, thanks for getting involved. Wait, and the eBay update. I totally forgot, I promised this when I was filming before and I just ended the video. So anyway, previously I put some of the memorabilia stuff that have been in old uh, videos from Matt Parker's Mass Puzzles up on eBay for charity and it all sold. So I can tell you now, we raised over 500 pounds, specifically 533 pounds and 10 pence. So there you are, all that money's going to WaterAid, who are doing some fantastic work. They are providing sanitation and hand washing facilities where they're needed the most. So I think WaterAid are great, they're my uh, chosen charity. So if you want to support them, you can. And later on, I'll find some more memorabilia and put it up on eBay. So thanks for your support.